Okay, so now we are moving away from the planning related activities and we are diving into the buying part of the score model and more specifically buying by industrial networks and electronic data interchange, also known as EDI. This is module seven. Okay, so the learning goals are basically three. What is EDI? Why using EDI? And what are the so-called EDI standards? So let us start with the first goal. So EDI in its simplest form is a computer to computer exchange of standard business documents in electronic format between two companies. So no more papers flowing, but also no more documents sent by email, for example. So there are some standards. So this you see it as some kind of codified docu documents flowing. Yeah. Now there is nothing new about this technology. EDI has been in use for many years now, and we can say it's the backbone on which many companies have developed their B2B strategies. Um, now, the way they operate is by means of networks. Now, these networks are usually owned by the buyer, and this permits the firm and designated suppliers or distribu distributors and other business partners to share product design and development, marketing, production, scheduling, inventory management, um, all sort of communication, including graphics and even email. Okay, so EDI can take place in these private networks or it can also take place across the internet. Either way, customers demand that their documents are sent and received securely to the trading partners. That's the whole idea behind. Okay, so just to illustrate uh, with an example, why using EDI? Well, um, here we have a, a drawing just to show you how complex a paper-based business process can become. Let us just walk through this diagram, which highlights the key information exchanges between a buyer and a supplier. Okay, so first of all, the buyer must query the procurement system in order to create an order. This is then printed place in an envelope and then mail to the supplier. The paper-based order is then received by the supplier who then enters the sales order into their own accounting system. From there, the supplier needs to create an invoice. It has to be printed and placed in an envelope where then is mailed back to the, yes, that's right, to the buyer. The invoice is received by the buyer who will then get it processed by typing it into the accounting accounts payable system. At the same time, the supplier will be contacting the buyer to arrange for a payment to be made. So as you can see, there are plenty of opportunities for errors. There is a lot of hands everywhere here uh, that can create errors. And into all this ordering and invoicing process and it doesn't have to be like this so so how does this works okay so once again now we have a an, an improved system so we have step by step a flow in which a supplier's proposal is sent electronically to purchasing organization so here's the supplier it sends the order to purchasing an organization an electronic contract is a proof over the network. And number three, so this is supplier manufactures and packages goods attaching shipping data recorded on a barcode. Quantities, chip, and prices enter into the system and flow to invoicing program, invoices transmitted to purchasing organization. And number five, manufacturer chips that order Purchasing organization receives packages, scans barcodes, and compares data to invoices, actual items received. Yeah, so there is here the barcodes, and payment approval is transferred, obviously electronically, and bank transfer funds from purchaser to supplier's account using electronic fund transfers, as we finally get to see here. That will be step number eight. So this 
illustrates the electronic flow among uh, companies, uh, which are, you see, there are proposals, contracts, documents, etc., etc. But once again, is not done just by emails, it's more like based on a private network. So the whole idea is that in the supply chain, where you have many companies interacting with each other, all these cooperate by means of the same EDI standards. Yeah, so here's just an example. So here on top we have uh, retailers, one, two, and three. On the bottom we have our suppliers, so this is our supply side, demand side, and the OEM or manufacturer. So, um, for example, with retailers, retailers can monitor changes in their inventory records and retailers use these electronic funds to pay manufacturers. Manufacturers, they also monitor the inventory at the retailers, so they are monitoring what's going on. Manufacturers replenish retailers' product inventory and, in, and update their records and invoice these retailers. Meanwhile, suppliers monitor manufacturers' raw goods of inventories. They also replenish and they also invoice. So you see, um, it's kind of a management of inventory from distance. Everything is monitored. The, all the replenishment, the invoice into orders, everything is kind of smoothly organized, smoothly flowing in the system. Now, there are some standards, and the, these, are, these are standards are implemented by something called transaction sets. Yeah? So, for, take for example, purchase orders, invoices, order status reports. I'm going to show you that in a second. A transaction set provides a standard to facilitate this exchange, and EDI standards help to ensure that the electronic business documents can be exchanged between companies with ease. There are many different standards used locally and around the world. So this is just straight from a catalog. You see, and, and here is cut, by the way, you see all these numbers refer to very specific type of documents. So you can see from material claims Commission sales reports, pricing history, insurance plans description. These are all standards and, and they are all codified by numbers and families. Now, depending on the industry, we do have different EDI standards. So, for example, very common one is the VIX, Voluntary Inter-Industry Communication Standards Committee. That is for merchandisers, mass merchandisers. But we also have for transportation operators, that is a TDCC, and the auto, auto industry has its own standards of communication, so suppliers and manufacturers, they all communicate with that. And, and these are very well-established organizations, so you get to see here their logos. So that's VIX, by the way, that's the Japan Automobile Manufacturers Association, SWIFT, transportation. So you see, they are very well established, yet they are different types of standards. And that makes it interesting because who says that a, that a company only has to deal with one type of standard? Maybe your company needs to deal with retailers and transportation type of industries. Okay, so the process to convert business documents to the required EDEI format is called mapping. Okay, so now it's a bit technical. So we have, for example, a purchase order might look like this. So we need to map it or a delivery notice or an invoice. So this is a process that codifies a document and the information con that, that document contains into the standard. This is just an example of mapping a purchase order. And here you get to see on the left side, a purchase order, paper-based, so, you know, address, PO number, date, uh, some specifications of the item required, and the pricing, and how this information looks like in this ANSI EDI purchase order, or the EDIFACT standard. And now uh, it becomes a little bit more difficult, uh, maybe to the trained eye, 
uh, a person can decodify what's going on here. I can see that it is, here's the price and here's the address, of course. We can still read that and here kind of the same, but there is a lot of alphanumerical codes that, of course, we have no clue what it is. And this is what these machines are sending. Okay, so here, um, again, as an example of mapping a document. Now, we talk about these networks and we talk about the VAN networks and these are private networks. So the whole idea is that the, the VAN also operates as an interface. So it, it collects transaction messages and information from the manufacturer and then translate those messages into information in the appropriate industry specific communication standard. So here is just an example. We have a manufacturer with a purchase order and then we have just a, a VAN interface that will translate that purchase order into the necessary standard. Here is a grocery retailer, here's a mass merchant. They might use VIX, they might use UCS code. This interface helps to translate that information. So it's okay, so I know that we're getting a bit technical here, but I think it's important that that at least we get a, a glimpse of, of how this operates. Okay, so what are the benefits? Well, all the ones that you see here is about speed, cost savings, accuracy, security, integration, just-in-time support. So, so by doing this, we eliminate a lot of uh, man, man errors. So, so that's the accuracy. No loss email. Um, uh, we also speed up the whole process. And of course, by doing this, by saving errors and speeding up, we save money. So no mailing costs, reduction in cost of storage space and, and employee hours dedicated, which by the way, this is one of the most expensive assets or, or that we have. Um, it also helps to integrate with other companies. Yeah? And of course, we can have a better flow, a more a pool system kind of flow, demand driven. Yeah of the increased communication speed that it that enhances so and also because of this facility to monitor this capability to monitor your customers inventory levels so that you can be ready in acting in replenishing those stock so lots of benefits that this technology has already brought since decades i would say yeah this is very old since i was a kid i think Existence. Imagine that. So that is about EDI and private networks. A very short introduction, yet it's worthwhile to be aware of how it works. Nothing else to say. Thank you very much. Don't forget, there are assignments waiting for you, but don't panic. There are also short assignments. Thanks, thanks again for your time, and as always, bye-bye.